Good morning, and welcome to Magnolia United Methodist Church, where we are rooted in God's grace. It is so good to see everyone here this morning, and welcome to all those joining us online on the Facebook stream. It is so good to be able to join together in worship on this third Sunday of Advent. My name is Pastor Andrew, and we are so glad that you are here. A couple of quick announcements before we begin. Don't forget Bible study at 4 o'clock today as we continue chapter 3 of Matt Rawls' The Redemption of Scrooge. Uh, we will be meeting, for those who want, we'll be meeting here in person, uh, but we'll also do the live stream on Zoom. I'll send out the Zoom link this afternoon, uh, but 4 o'clock here in person and on Zoom. Mark your calendars for Christmas Eve. We'll have our 6 o'clock family Christmas Eve service. Any kids who want are invited to wear their Christmas PJs, and we're going to gather the kids up here, and we're going to read the Christmas story together to the kids and have our candlelight service afterwards as well as some hot chocolate and some Christmas cookies afterwards. Eight o'clock will be our traditional quieter Christmas Eve service with candlelight, silent night, holy night at the end. This service, is gonna, we got a couple new parts uh, to introduce this morning uh, because of some things we need to take care of. Uh, so I invite you to join me in prayer now that we ask God to bless this service, to fill this place with his Holy Spirit, and let us hear from God this morning. Will you pray with me? Father Almighty, thank you. Thank you for this time to gather together on this third Sunday of Advent as we get closer to Christmas. Fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Let us hear a word from you this morning. As we sing songs of praise and read your word and hear it preached, we, play, we pray that you are magnified in all that we do and all that you hear. Speak to us this morning as well. Remind us that Christmas is coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We have Margaret, we have Nancy and Caleb here this morning to lead us in worship. Uh, I pray if you know the words and if you want to sing quietly behind your mask, I invite you to do so. If you're at home, sing as loud as you want. Let's make a joyful noise to God.
It's time, it's time to light uh, the third Advent candle as we progress, as we continue our journey through this season of Advent and come close to the manger. Drew Vaughn and his family are here this morning to light our third Advent candle for us. Good morning. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. On this third Sunday of Advent, we have a, a couple of videos from our bell choir. Uh, due to our technical, technical limitations that the season of COVID has brought upon us, uh, the Bells cannot be here to perform in person for us. And so they recorded a couple of songs for us. We're going to hear one right now. Normally we welcome new members at the end of service, but today is a special day because we are welcoming new members and baptizing their child. And so we're going to do it all at once here in the middle of service. So I'd like to invite Scott and Meredith and their baby girl, Haley, to come forward this morning. Scott's mother is a friend of ours uh, from a previous appointment, and we've had conversations about what joining the church would look like, about what our church is about and where we want to go and what we want to be. And they have decided that they want to be a part of what God is doing here in Magnolia. I know that they, have, they profess belief in Jesus Christ and that they have been baptized. And so we have one question for you. Will you, Scott and Meredith, 
will you uphold this church, be faithful to it, and uphold it with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you do so? Amen. Church, no one joins the church by themselves. They are invited to become a part of us. They are pledging to become a part of what God is doing through us here in Magnolia. And so it's a chance for us to remember our own vows that we made when we joined our church. And so will you renew your vows to uphold this place with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your witness, and your service? And further, will you surround this couple and their child with community, with love, and with prayer? If you will, say, we will. Amen. Welcome to the family, Scott and Meredith. And now we get to baptize Miss Haley. Miss Haley. How old is Miss Haley again? 11 months? 11 months old. So Scott and Meredith, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Do you reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If you do, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, say, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If you do, say, I do. And finally, will you nurture this child, Miss Haley, in Christ's holy church? that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. If you will, say, I will. Amen. Let's bless the water now. Let us pray together this morning. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, and when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land on which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John in the river Jordan and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. And so we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this child who's about to receive it. To wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness and throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. Amen. Amen. You know, let me hold her. Come here, Miss Haley. Good morning. We tried. It's okay. It's okay. Miss Haley, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ, that through baptism, she is incorporated into the Holy Spirit, into God's new creation, and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood with us. We are all one in Jesus Christ. And with joy and thanksgiving, let us welcome Miss Haley Diane Lindsay to the body of Christ this morning. <laughs> Miss Haley, you're now part of a much larger family. These people are going to pray for you. They're going to love you. They're going to spoil you. And they're going to tell mom and dad everything you do. You got a lot of eyes watching now. Scott, Meredith, Haley, thank you all so much. Welcome to Magnolia United Methodist Church. Welcome to Magnolia. Amen. At the end of church, if there's anybody who would like to know more about what it means to become a member of Magnolia United Methodist Church, about accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to speak with me briefly. At the end of service, I'll have Scott and Meredith and Haley join us out here in the Welcome Center for y'all to welcome from an appropriate social distance with a fist bump, a wave, whatever is appropriate, to welcome them to our church.
Amen. Now at this time, it is time we have the opportunity to come before God with our prayers and with our praises. As anybody's been watching the headlines, everybody knows that COVID is spiking in our state and around our nation and around our world. Currently, we are on average losing more people per day than we lost on 9-11. And the projections show for the next 60 to 90 days with the current spike, that's what we're looking at. But thankfully, there has been a COVID that, or a vaccine that has been approved and is being, uh, will hopefully be in start distributed tomorrow. The light at the end of the tunnel is growing brighter. However, in that, there's, an there's a chance that we might let down our guard and actually make things worse. I pray that we as a church may remain vigilant and remain cautious in this time until we are all vaccinated and we all, there is enough herd immunity that we can begin to return to something like normalcy. In the meantime, let us continue to pray. Let's pray for our doctors and nurses who are witnessing unimaginable death, who this to the toll that this time is taking on them is unimaginable. Let us pray for them. Let us pray and give thanks for the people who've worked hard on this vaccine uh, and that we may see enough uh, doses for our people, for our nation, that we may soon return to normal. Let us pray for those who are still suffering the economic effects of this time, who've felt the pinch, who've lost their jobs, who are wondering how to put food on the table or to provide for their families in this Christmas season. Let us pray for each other. Let us pray for our nation as there's still, this election is still being contested and there is joy, there is distraught, there is angst, there is anger. Let us pray that we may remember that we are one people and that we may return to something like civility and decency in our nation. Let us pray for this season. This season is often difficult for those who've lost a loved one. While we are celebrating and rejoicing for those who've lost a loved one recently or in the past, this can be a really difficult season. Let us pray for them as well. And then let us pray that we as a church may see the needs of our community and figure out how we may best respond to it. Whether it's taking part of the canned food drive in our narthex or the uh, other collection facilities in the gym or at the office to help support SOS ministries here in town with all that they do to put food on people's tables. Whether it is a kind word, a call to somebody who may be lonely, a Christmas card sent to someone we haven't talked to in years. Let us see the needs around us and let us figure out how to respond. But even in the midst of all this, there is still much to be thankful for. For new life, for health, for daily provision, for those of us who still have jobs, the ability to get up and go to work, even when the alarm clock come, sounds entirely too early in the morning. There's still much to be thankful for. So as I lead us in prayer this morning, I invite you to go to God as well and to lift up your prayer concerns but then also give thanks for all that is in your life that brings you joy, all the blessings of life. Will you pray with me this morning? Father Almighty, thank you. Thank you for this time that we've been given that we can join together in prayer and in praise. God, we know that you know our needs before we do and better than we ever will. So we ask that you hear our prayers this morning and that your will may be done for our world and for our nation still gripped by a pandemic, hear our prayers. For those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, surround them with peace and hear our prayers. For those struggling to put food on the table or wondering what comes next, God be with them and hear our prayers. For our nation divided, unite us again. Remind us that we are one people. Let us treat each other with dignity and with decency. Hear our prayers. For our community and the needs of this time, Lord, show us what we may do, how we may be of service, how we can be the church in this time. Hear our prayers. But God, even in the midst of this, there is still so much to be thankful for for our friends and our families that put smiles on our faces, for life and for health and for daily provision, we give you thanks and we give you praise. For all the other small blessings of life, those that we often take for granted, 
Help us to appreciate them now more than ever, especially in the season. So hear our prayers and hear our praise this morning as we now pray the prayer that your son, Jesus Christ, your gift to us, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Amen. Let us continue with praise as Caleb and Nancy and Margaret present a special medley for us this morning. Now time for our children's lesson. Mr. Brent is here with us this morning. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different. If any children want to come and sit right here on the front row so Mr. Brent can see y'all a little bit better so y'all can see him, y'all come up and sit on the front row if you would like. Well, come on down if you like, boys and girls, right there in front. Okay, today, boys and girls, I'm going to tell you a story about Mary, the mother of Jesus. However, this story is going to start way before Mary even knows 
uh, that she's going to have a baby. And way before even Mary and Joseph get married. That's right. And in this story, it's about a very special message and messenger. And this is how the story goes, okay? Are you ready? One day, Mary gets a phone call. Hello? Yes, who's calling? Well, wait a second, boys and girls. There were no phones 2,000 years ago, were there? No. It wasn't a phone call, but Mary did get a very important message from a special messenger. And this messenger, and this is how the story goes. Well, one day, an angel came to visit Mary. That's right. An angel came to visit Mary. And Mary, Mary's saying, I'm just a normal person. I'm nobody special. She was a little bit worried, a little bit afraid. Look, an uh, uh, angel coming? But the angel said to Mary, he said, Mary, don't be afraid. God sees you as very special. And you're going to have a baby. And this baby, you're going to call him Jesus. And Jesus is going to be the son of God. Well, Mary was a little more comfortable after listening to all this. And she says, God, I will do, said to Gabriel, I will do whatever God wants me to do. And we know the rest of the story that a baby was born. That baby was Jesus. And the important thing I want you to remember is this messenger. This messenger was the angel Gabriel. And sometimes whenever some of the Christmas trees, if you look at that Christmas tree up there, there's an angel on top of that tree. And that angel represents the angel Gabriel that came to visit Mary many, many years ago. Okay, boys and girls, put your hands together, and I'm going to say a blessing for you. Dear God, thank you so much for Mary, Jesus, the Son of God, and thank you for that messenger, Angel Gabriel. Amen and amen. All right, boys and girls, have a great week coming up. Thank you, Mr. Brent. This is the time of the service where we hear a uh, piece of centering music. It's time for us to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to hear the scriptures read and the word preached. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to read what the passage that is referred to often as the Annunciation, verse, starting with verse 26. If you have an offering, you can go to magnoliaumc.org and click the donate button and leave an offering there online or to place it in the baskets by the doors on your way out. Let us hear a little bit of Christmas music now, our hymn for the day, and let us prepare to hear the word read.
Amen. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 26 this morning. Hear these words. Sorry, hold on. Our sound guy just scowled at me. It's always a good morning. Let us start with verse 26 this morning. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever I am the Lord's servant, Mary said. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The word of God for us, the people of God. Amen. Excuse me, may I have your attention for a few brief announcements? And everyone tunes out. There's just something about announcements that people just tend to tune out. The show hasn't started yet. The program hasn't yet begun. It's just the announcements. I don't know when the last time was that I listened to the pre-flight safety announcements. They come on the microphone and people got headphones on. They're reading their magazine. They're already watching a movie and I'm watching what everyone else is doing and I'm not paying attention. So if the plane crashes, I don't know what to do. In a previous church, the worship bulletin was several pages long with announcements about everything that every ministry was doing for the foreseeable future. The announcements would be lifted up during the worship service on a video. They'd be on the slides before the worship service began. They would send them out in an email blast to the entire church and people still would ask why they didn't know what was going on. when you get that amber alert on your phone or the silver alert on your phone, how many people actually stop to look and see what is going on or do we just turn it off, put it back in our pockets and go about our business? How many pieces of mail do we actually open before we tear them up and throw them away? How many emails do you just go through, click, 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 delete and never open the emails? Have you ever actually checked your junk email folder to see what is actually in there? If you're not getting church emails, I encourage you to check your church, your junk email because a lot of times for whatever reason, our church emails end up there. How many people, how many companies, how many groups are clamoring for our attention but they just can't? get their announcements through to us because we're too busy, too distracted, or can't be bothered. But what if an angel shows up with an announcement from God that would not only change our lives, but forever change the world itself? Would we pay attention? Would we respond? How would we respond? This morning, our scripture draws our attention to the passage in our Bible that Christians throughout history have called the Annunciation. The Annunciation, the moment that Gabriel is sent from God to tell Mary that God has chosen her. That God wanted her to be a part of something that would forever change the world 
if she accepted and relented to God's call. And if she accepted, it would not only change her world forever, but it would change ours too. Mary was most likely a young teenage girl at this time. In the day and age in which she lived, she would have had almost no legal status at all. In her world, almost every matter in her life, every decision would be decided by someone else. Legally, she was next to no one. She was, what's more, she was from the small backwater town of Nazareth. Nazareth was, was off the beaten path. Nazareth was where people went to to get away from the world. It sits in an elevated bowl hidden by Ridgeline. You don't end up in Nazareth by accident. Nazareth was the kind of place where people, by and large, expected little and got less. It was not the kind of place that we would look to for someone to come from that would change the world. Yet God, that God doesn't operate the way that we do. God sees what we don't, and God saw something in Mary, this young girl living in Nazareth. God saw that he could make himself vulnerable and be born into our world through Mary and have Jesus, the Son of God, be raised and taught by this young girl. And so God sends Gabriel to Nazareth. I wonder if that day started out differently. Was there something in the air that said that this day was gonna be different for Mary? Was there a sign perhaps in the stars? I expect that that day started just like every other day did in Nazareth. There's just gonna be one more day in a long line of all the same days until it wasn't. We don't know exactly where Mary was when Gabriel suddenly appeared, but artwork by some of the greatest artists the world have ever seen place this scene somewhere inside, quiet and hidden away from the world, which would make sense because you get the sense that this moment that we are peeking into this moment in this morning in scripture, that this is a private announcement. This isn't something that was meant to be blasted across the headlines or posted on social media or talked about on the news. It's not how God operates. So perhaps Mary was in the barn tending to her family's animals, which would make a nice bookend to the story. Maybe she was home by herself, seeing to the chores that she obvi or most likely had to be responsible for. Perhaps she was somewhere else where no one else was around when suddenly Mary finds herself in the presence of an angel. What images come to mind when we hear the word angel? How do we picture them? We probably look right there. Long flowing white gowns, white fluffy feathery wings, and a halo and a lot of light. Artwork throughout the centuries have shaped our imaginations to picture just that. But the biblical description of angels was something quite different. The prophet Ezekiel describes angels as looking something like a man but with four faces in two sets of wings and perhaps the body of a lion. Elsewhere, angels are described as being continually on fire. There's a reason that throughout scripture when an angel appears, often the first words are, do not be afraid. Because if we saw something like that in real life, we're headed the opposite direction. And Mary suddenly finds herself in the presence of Gabriel who greets her by saying, greetings you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And instead of freaking out and running in terror, screaming like a banshee, the author of the gospel says that Mary was merely greatly troubled at this greeting and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Mary is apparently made of sterner stuff than I am. 
which is maybe why God chose her to bear the son of God. It's gonna take somebody like that to raise my son. I know we're gonna need somebody tough. I choose Mary. And then Gabriel continues, do not be afraid. See, I told you it was there. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. We'll get more into this next week with Mary's song or the Magnificat, but yes, Mary knew. Mary was the first to know exactly who Jesus was going to be. Mary was the one to whom God made the announcement to in the first place. Mary knew what God was planning and inviting her to be a part of. God didn't announce to the world what God was going to do or how the Son of God was coming into the world or what day and through whom. God just quietly and privately announced to Mary what God's plans were and then invited her to be a part of it. God was not going to force Mary to do anything. God was not going to force Mary to bear Christ. This announcement that had gotten Mary's attention was also an invitation. It was an invitation to be a part of God sneaking into the world. After Gabriel finishes his declaration and answering Mary's questions about how this would happen, Mary accepts. She replies to the angel saying, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mary responded to the announcement that God had made to the world through her. Here's the thing about announcements. They're designed to get a particular audience's attention. They're meant to grab our attention and invite us to do something or to be a part of something. Some announcements are for everyone. There's a new restaurant in town. Come and try, see what we've got to offer. There's a global pandemic. Please wash your hands, wear a mask, and maintain some distance. Help us slow this thing down. The announcement might be for everyone, but as we are all too aware of, some people just ignore announcements. Hey, I'm having a party. I'd love it if you would make it, if you could come. Hey, we're having a small dinner gathering, and you and your husband or you and your wife are invited to come. We'd love to have you. Some announcements are for limited audiences. You can announce it all you want, but you can't make anyone respond if they don't want to. Once the announcement is made, it's made to the per- it's then up to the person who received the announcement to choose how they will respond, whether they give you the RSVP or not. You can announce an event in the bulletin all you want in worship and by email and people are still going to miss it. You can shout out the most important announcement the world has ever heard from the mountaintops and people are still going to ignore it. God quietly announced to Mary that God was about to turn the world upside down. The invitation wasn't to us yet, but through Mary's child, we would all find ourselves invited to come and then find God ourselves. The scene that we're looking in on this morning is a private one. It's not meant for us yet, except that through this moment, we will all find ourselves to come and experience God ourselves. Because of this moment, this quiet, private moment in Nazareth 2,000 years ago, we're all gathered here this morning. But let me ask a question. Has God ever announced something to you? Has God ever invited you to be a part of something or to do something? I know in my life, I like to have things written out in bright, flashing, neon letters. I'm the world's best at missing the signals. When I was, when I, uh, 
realized that I liked my wife and wanted to take her out on a date, I wanted to know if she was gonna say yes. I wanted the bright flashing neon letters. On our first date, I wanted to give her a kiss, and despite all the signs that she was giving me, I still missed them. I wanted the bright flashing neon letters. When I was wrestling with the idea that maybe God was calling me to the ministry, I wanted the burning bush. I wanted an angel to come and speak. I wanted to hear the audible voice of God announcing that yes, I was being called. But too often, when God announces his intentions, when God calls us to, calls us to him for the very first time or invites us to be a part of something, it's not with an angel sent from heaven, but it's done with quiet whispers gentle tugs, and persistent nudges that if we want, we can ignore. God is not going to force us to do anything. But if we ignore these quiet announcements, these quiet invitations that God is extending to us, we might be missing out on how God wants to change us or maybe use us to change the world or maybe just change the world for one person. God privately announced to Mary, a teenage girl in the backwater village that the world had overlooked, that God was about to do something that the world had never seen. God would be born into our world in a small village surrounded by shepherds and animals and angels, but ignored and overlooked, unseen by the powerful and the mighty. God would call fishermen and tax collectors to be his disciples instead of scholars and the religious elite. God would choose crucifixion and death to give us eternal life. The Annunciation reminds us that God doesn't operate the way that we would. The second verse of our carol this morning, What Child Is This?, is a perfect reminder of this. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? The end of fear for all who hear. The silent word is speaking. This, this is Christ the King. It doesn't make sense that God would be born into such low settings, but God chooses the unlikely and the overlooked time and time and time again. God calls us imperfect and flawed and people in need of salvation to become his people and to be his church for just this time right now on this earth, wherever we are. This Christmas, let us be reminded, let us remember that God sneaks into our world in the least expected way. God made himself vulnerable to come close to us, to call us to him. In this crazy season of an insane year, with all the noise of the world and the nonstop headlines, let us pause and listen closely. Let us look with careful eyes for what God might be trying to get through to us right now, for what God might be trying to announce today. If you've never accepted God's grace, God is still calling you. If you've walked with God for a while, God is always asking us to take the next step, to follow even further. God might be calling you, calling us to do something new, something that doesn't make sense to us, but makes sense to God. I've learned that God often calls us to new places and to new ministries when we least expect it. So let us listen closely for God's voice. And I pray that our answer to whatever God, whatever it is that God is calling us to, no matter how crazy or how big or how scary that it might be, how risky it seems, I pray that our answer will be the same that Mary gave to Gabriel. I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God doesn't work the way we do. Is there. Our musicians come back this morning to lead us in a reprise of our hymn this morning of What Child Is This? 
God doesn't work the way that we do. How God moves and God operates is often in ways that we would never imagine. Yet because of how God works and how God moves through the Annunciation, through a young girl in the backwater town of Nazareth, we are gathered here this morning worshiping Christ the King. Listen for God's voice. May the realization of what God has done for us be made more real this morning than it ever has been for us before. Before we go this morning, uh, Kyle has asked for just a moment. Uh, he apparently needs to say some words of appreciation. If we could get uh, members of the staff that are present, uh, Kristen and Drew, if you would come up, and Andrew, if you'd come up, and Caleb, if you'd come down, that would be terrific. While they're coming down, I'd like to say a word to the congregation. Um, for the last couple of weeks, we asked for uh, a love offering, and you responded very generously. And for that, we're very, very appreciative. But uh, it, we, as we come to the end of the year, uh, it's, it's a great time for us to say thank you to all of our staff. And we realize that we just have four members of our staff here today. But you need not be present to win. We will. Uh, provide gifts to all of our staff, but we are very, very appreciative and are very thankful for you. Uh, Kristen is our newest member of the staff, and uh, she's got energy for days, and uh, her, her creativity and uh, will, will really shine in 2021, no doubt. And uh, uh, Drew, um, we, we thank you too. Uh, it's been a challenging year, uh, and you know, just trying to keep the youth together, and it's just you've, you've done a really notable job, and we're really looking forward to 2021. Uh, Caleb? Caleb's musical talents are undeniable, as you all know, and we appreciate that leadership. And obviously, uh, last but not least, um, uh, <laughs> Andrew, we, we, we thank you for that. Let, let me also raise up the other members of the staff that are not here. Uh, Carolyn Foster, with whom uh, Kristen has taken over, obviously she put in a, a tremendous amount of work this, this year. Uh, Kathy Prater, uh, who's a bell choir, that, those videos turned out very, very well. I really appreciate that. And uh, Susan Alford, uh, our uh, church secretary, I think it's important to realize that a staff is the lifeblood of a church, and they keep us connected with one another, and they keep us connected with God, and for that we really are very, very appreciative. Let, let's bow our heads for a word of thanks. Dear God, we are so thankful for the gifts that you poured out on these individuals, and we Thank you for calling them to, to your work here at Magnolia Methodist Church. We thank you. We, we lift up our appreciation for all of their efforts, and we, we ask that you lift them up for their continuing service in the future. We thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kyle.
Kristen is our new children's ministry lead. Uh, if you have any interest in being a part of the children's ministry, helping out, I don't know she's looking for volunteers. Drew is our youth leader, and I'm always looking for new talent to take over, I mean, to help him uh, do what he does. Uh, truly, I appreciate Drew. And he gives me a hard time, and I love giving him one in return. Uh, and then Caleb, our music ministry director. Thank you so much. Go forth. Go forth in joy this morning. Listening for God, what God is calling us to do, how God might be speaking to us this morning. Go forth looking for how God's already at work, how Christ has made all this possible. Join us next week as we continue our journey through Advent next week, and then join us for Christmas Eve. Go forth in God's grace, in the presence, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday.